Hey, welcome to the walkthrough of the projects page in Educurator OS. By the end of this video, you're going to get an overview of the page and how to customize it a little bit for your team. I'm also going to walk you through how to create your own workflow so that you can have clear systems and processes to coordinate your team or just yourself uh, for any content type for podcasts or blogs that you'll be making. If you scroll down the page, I've actually created two different workflows, one for video production and another for workshop creation. As you can see, they look kind of similar, but they've got different stages in them. One's got time rehearsal here, one's got write and shoot, and this has got a run of show, and this has got a review. How do I do that? It's the same database, but different views. Let's dive into that a little bit. After playing with this, you can move stuff around, delete this dummy data, and move them from stage to stage, or rename the thing. After you've done that, scroll down a little bit. Go to the configure section. Now this is where the original database is. These up here are linked databases to the projects database, but this is the original projects database. As you can see here, there's related databases to what kind of topic is this? Is it productivity? Is it life hacks? Is it personal development? What kind of content type is it? You set this all up elsewhere, but I'm just pointing you to where you can see all that information down here. And if you look closely enough, you'll find that there's the video production workflow and also the workshop creation workflow. Inside is the configure option. Now these are both select column types. It's important that we have a select one, not a multi-select. Otherwise it gets a little bit weird. We want the configure settings. So as you can see, all the different stages are lined up here. And if I do the same for the video production workflow, different stages, different workflows. So how do we get another one of these for the online course workflow? That's what I'm going to show you right now. So before we even start playing with this database, we're just going to write a list of all the different stages we can imagine in this workflow. I'm going to make it super short just so I don't spend forever putting in data. So we're going to have something like a idea section, it's going to have a script, and then you're going to Blam. That's one, two, three, four, five, six stages. Now you're going to want to come back down to this project's database and scroll across to make a new column. Let's call it the online course workflow. And we want to change that to a select. Um, scrolling back over, you can't get away from me. The configure option. It's blank. There's nothing in there. What do I do? Now I've got to put the stages in, the idea stages first, and then after the idea stage, we're going to put the script, then we want to hit the other thing, and then the final one, which is publish. But I've been a silly, and I've been making these changes in this top line, um, actually on this piece of content, how to stay in flow. I don't want it there because this is not an online course. Let's just delete that. If you're a clean freak, move it over to the other workflow so it lives next to them. Cool, now your workflows are all next to each other. Let's scroll up a little bit. We want one of these here. How do I do that? Well, you wanna press forward slash linked database. That's right, links. And then you wanna type in projects db or whatever the name of this is that you created. And kaplow, there you have it, the same database, but it looks kind of ugly. Let's delete that text, and this is not the right shape. We want to change the view. The view will be board. The board will be called test, and we can create that. It's still ugly. How do we change that? So we go to the dot all the way over here. Wow, my talking head is so massive. How do I get rid of that? There we go. Where are we? Dot, dot, dot. And we want to group that by the online course workflow. It's better, kind of. These are not courses, so let's get that right to the end there and hide it. We're getting there. Look at that. A naked database so naked that we should put things in the nakedness. Let's say that you want to create a new online course. What would I do? I would probably click something like new in the idea section and give it a name. Let's call this new course. And then 
If you click into here, you can see that there are a lot of templates um, for new blog posts, podcasts, new videos, new online courses, worksheets, and workshops. Another way of getting to these is by clicking the new blue button, but the arrow next to it, and clicking new online course. So this is a new course card ready to be produced and watch it hop along the workflow as you go on your journey to make things. If I journey a little bit deeper inside, you'll find all of the different parts and pieces that you need to go from idea to produce and publish, starting with learning objectives, resources and inspirations, going into the B-roll and the filming stuff that you need, piece by piece, timestamp by timestamp, and all the good stuff in there that you need to create that course. Just to recap, we've covered how to create one of these workflows from scratch. It's using this database down at the bottom, which is the original database and using a linked database view. One thing you can do to tidy it up is actually to delete the other view so that there is only one. That's right, only one view. And that's it. Have fun with it and I hope this does your team well and keeps everybody organized and a little less confused when there's lots of assets, video, scripts, and people talking at the same time.